Right, so I thought I'd run through a quick product tour of Untangle because I've been using it for a while and I think people should really know about it. So Untangle basically provides um, routing and firewall functionality. It's a Linux-based OS, so you can check it on pretty much any box you want, from a Beastie server all the way down to some crappy Pentium 4 um, 512 mega RAM um, system, so either running a home network or a business, huge business enterprise. Um, the, the version I'm currently running here is the free version, so everything you see here in the rack infrastructure is um, it's free for you to use. Everything that you have to pay for is on the site here. Um, so I'll run through a quick few of the features, etc., etc., uh, and then sort of then you can then go out and try and deploy it because it's it's so worth so worth doing. Um, so it does it provides it in a what the on the Untangle interface is basically a rack system, and these are all virtual appliances which you can turn on and off. Which is really really handy, um, and because it's a web GUI, it's really, really good for noobs like me. Um, so anybody, pretty much anybody, can use it. To be honest, if you're really really new to networking, really really new to configuring, and stuff like that, is really really good because it, it's almost the same as most Soho router interfaces. To be honest, um, I wouldn't really suggest as much different. So let's run through uh, run through a few of the the things that uh, that you can expect and, and sort of the features of, of each appliance through the free version. So you get spam blocker, which is pretty much self-explanatory. It blocks spam. This is for for email. Then you've got fish blocker, which blocks uh, phishing both through um, HTTP and on all your email protocols, so SMTP, POP, and IMAP. Um, then you've got your spyware blocker, uh, which you can. We might as well go into this and actually have a look at it. Uh, you can block stuff like ActiveX, um, either all ActiveXs or only the malicious ones. I've got it blocking malicious ones at the moment, and also blocking stuff like tracking and ad cookies um, and things like this. Um, it you know just. But actually uses also stops people snooping etc etc web filtering this is ideal for well either both for public access Wi-Fi if you provide it through your copy shop or a coffee shop even not coffee shop um, or even if you've got like a school or something like that, you don't want your kids accessing pornography or anything like that or, um, or well gambling or hacking things perhaps you want to block that so um, you can block them and flag them um, then you've got virus blocker which is really really handy it, it, it provides um, virus protection against HTTP, IMAP, SMTP, um, POP and also FTP as well which is pretty good. Intrusion prevention is basically stops hackers, really stops hackers in the tracks, getting through your network, stops them at the gateways and stops them getting any further. Protocol control pretty much does what it says on the tin, stops, uh, well controls protocols really. Um, if you look under here you can pretty much block most internet protocols really from instant messaging to peer-to-peer -peer sort of stuff, so BitTorrent, etc., etc., um, all the way up to stuff like gaming, so Xbox Live, uh, World of Warcraft, um, things like this. So if you if you're worried about your employees or even even your colleagues actually accessing things and not supposed to be being very unproductive, you can stop them doing and, and accessing things like that through the network and wasting company resources, etc. Um, you've got firewall, standard sort of stuff. What do you expect from a firewall? Um, ad blocker, again, standard sort of stuff. Captive portal. Now this is really really handy for public access Wi-Fi. So if you've got a coffee shop um, and you've got public access Wi-Fi, this is really good because it allows you to create um, or allows you to enforce terms of service, um, uh, you know, and, and provide a customized user user interface page. So you know when you go into most um, coffee shops uh, or that provide um, open access Wi-Fi, either a coffee shop or, or a library or something like that, it'll uh, allow you like coming up with a page saying well, you need to accept our terms of service or welcome to so and so public access Wi-Fi. That's essentially what it, what, what it provides here. So cat reports really handy for that. Also, if you've got um, like public access Wi-Fi in your company, perhaps, um, and but you don't want all the sundry accessing it. You only want your employees accessing it or those with user accounts accessing it. You can link it in with that Active Directory. So if you've got Active Directory running on a Windows Server box, you can link it with that. If you've got Radius Server, you can link it with that. And also, it's got um, it's got its own inbuilt local directory. So if you want to define like maybe you've got ten users and that would define define a local directory you can do that um, which, so that's really really handy um, for stuff like this you also can create um, specific pass and block lists for different users so maybe you want the boss to access everything from pornography all the way down to peer to peer but you don't want everybody accessing pornography and peer to peer and other bits like that so you can block and do, do, do different things like this um, open VPN pretty much provides VPN access so secure access to your network if you're a network admin of course you know what this is um, 
can also do um, generate custom certification or certificates for each client as well. Pretty handy. Attack blocker. Now this is really good for stopping DOS attacks. If you ever had DOS attacks, you know how much of a pain in the ass it can be. And um, this stops DOS attacks. Also, you know when because obviously the way DOS works is it just floods your network with lots and lots of traffic. If you've got something that needs to have access to a lot of traffic in your network, you can actually define that under your settings. Um, you can actually define that and say uh, exceptions to the rule and add them uh, in there. Um, and then you've got reports. Now reports um, basically provides um, what you'd expect from most reports, SNMP uh, reporting, so if you've got an SNMP um, SNMP sort of service running um, uh, or software package running you can use use it through that so something like Spiceworks perhaps. They also do stuff like email delivery so you can actually get, get it sent to your email address so if you've got something that you know at the end of the month or the end of the week you want you want to be emailed as to, the <coughs> as to sort of how your network's running you can do that as well. So that's pretty much it. But like I say, this is probably ideally suited for stuff like public access Wi-Fi. So if you're providing, if you're a coffee shop or a library or something like that, you're providing public access Wi-Fi, um, you don't want your users accessing all sorts of stuff on the internet, mainly because you know you're paying for the internet. You don't want your users uh, absolutely raping bandwidth and stuff like this. Now, of course, you can have the paid versions, which is really really good. Um, we're sort of starting off for one to ten users slash machines. We're looking at five hundred and forty dollars, or about three hundred and forty quid, uh, Great British pounds. That is, right up to fifteen hundred plus machines. Um, you're looking at about twenty one thousand uh, US dollars, or about thirteen thousand Great British pounds, and that's not bad. And the premium package basically includes what's down here. So. You've got advanced web filtering, Kaspersky virus block, which is a hell of a lot better than um, than the standard virus block that comes in built. Com uh, com dot touch um, spam booster. Um, then you've got WAN balance and WAN failover. So WAN failover. If you've got two ISPs and you really need something to be uh, like a server, perhaps it needs to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But you you don't ever want that to come down. If one of your ISPs or something something's wrong with your ISP and it goes down, you've then got that that WAN failover to fail over too. So that's really quite good. Then also you got WAN balancers. So if you've got like two WANs that you sort of want to balance out, so you've got two 50 meg connections, that gives you 100 meg connections throughout the network. It's really handy. Um, then you've got bandwidth controls. So you can you know control the bandwidth through you know uh, through different users. So say like this user can only have 10 meg or something like that. Um, and web caching as well, which is really handy if you've got lots and lots of machines and you've got a minimal uh, bandwidth. So you've got something like a fiber connection. You've got like 100 users. Which is very, very, you know, not ideal. I know, but if you know, making use of the bad job, web caching allows you to then cache web pages so it loads faster and things like this. Um, you've also got stuff like policy managers. You like, like under AD, you can actually um, enable policies, um, so different times of day, etc., etc. Um, you also got directory connector, which is what you need to actually link it in with the Active Directory under, under Captive Portal. You need that um, to actually access. Um, Active Directory, you need um, Directory Connector. Um, as it says here, you need requires Directory Connector as well as AD. Um, so you do have to pay for that, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. Branding Manager as well, which is really handy. So under your public access Wi-Fi area, so when you when that user page comes up, you can actually customize the web page. So you've got a HTTP page that you can HTTP page that you can or HTML page even that you can actually access and, and sort of customize and things like this. Uh, which is really, really handy for you know if you want to make sure you know it's a bit more customizable I suppose, and you also do get with your premium package uh, twenty four seven um, support from Untangle, uh, which is really quite good, and also you get configuration backup, so um, you can allow it to automated automated backup. So if if it fails at any time, you can quickly like rebuild another machine and copy over all your settings to another machine. So that's really really cool. So that's pretty much it to be honest. Um, if you've got a spare box kicking around, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever the spec, just chuck it in there. All you need is two nicks. So two network interface cards, probably an onboard and external, and then you're good to go. Really, um, put it in between your modem and your network, and you're good to go. Or you can set it up in bridge mode. So if you've got a network going and you've got some funky stuff for Cisco going on, you don't want to mess with your packets. But you want to like I don't know, do some web filtering. Put it in as a bridge mode. Put it in between um, your servers and your users, and then um, it can be dishing out. All sorts of funky stuff, um, uh, you know, things like this. Um, of course, it, this is probably ideally suited like for me for like a test network. I can then put this on a se separate subnet and sort of have a firewall and stuff like this. It's quite you know, nice and dedicated. But definitely, if you've got a spare machine kicking around, just chuck it on, run it, have it running your network, um, and job is good.